Hey, Josh, if I file a workers' compensation claim, am I at risk for being terminated from my job? Well, that is a, it's a good question that I'm, uh, I'm getting very often lately. Uh, it seems to be a common, a common question as to whether or not uh, someone's going to lose their job if they, if they file a workers' compensation claim. Um, the, the answer in Wisconsin that I always give if somebody asks me that is pretty direct. And it's the fact that the, the answer is it's possible. Okay. Um, I, you know, the employees are at will in Wisconsin. And the, and the fact is, is that when somebody sustains an injury and, um, and there's now going to be some challenges in terms of that individual performing the work that they were previously performing, um, uh, and, and the certain things that they needed to do. And there's, there's concerns over whether or not they can do that sort of work anymore and at what level. Um, these are the these are things that employers absolutely take into consideration and and converse and talk about um, when somebody sustains an injury. Um, I can tell you there are there are some employers uh, that are much better with this sort of situation or handle the situation. Uh, much better than others. Uh, but generally speaking, there is absolutely risk that um, if a workers' compensation claim is filed, uh, that um, there could be a, a termination down the road or the elimination of the job. Um, so, you know, so what does that mean and what should people do about that? Um, you know, I think that the general reaction whenever I answer the question in the way that I do is, um, well, then I'm not going to file a claim because I can't afford to lose my job. And what's, you know, what am I going to do? And, you know, I got a family to feed and I already was living paycheck to paycheck and so on. I mean, all valid concerns um, that I 100% sympathize with um, and 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 hear uh, completely. Uh, but my second response or comment to it is, well, if you don't file the claim and it's a severe or significant injury, uh, things could be a lot worse. Um, as, as bad as it may be, if an employer decides to take action uh, as far as eliminating your position or terminating your position, not filing a claim um, could actually be far worse than that, especially if it's a severe injury that requires a significant amount of medical attention and 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 is going to cost or be costly as far as medical expense and so on. So, you know, to me, I I recommend to people with the exception of you know, a little bump or bruise or the the um, the paper cut sort of situation or that kind of thing. I do recommend that if there is an injury <clears throat> that an injured worker files uh, a claim, they, they file an incident report and they file the claim with the workers' compensation carrier. Um, again, in most instances, especially if it's not a severe injury, um, you know, th there's there's a few dollars paid in medical expense. The person's able to return to work. There's not any sort of restriction component, and he did everything that needed to be done, and everybody is is fine, and 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 we all move on. Um, but in the instance where the condition gets worse, or um, the pain gets worse, or it involves uh, more significant medical treatment, uh, and so on. Uh, you're going to be very thankful that you filed that claim at the time that you did, um, which hopefully was right around the time of injury, despite the threat uh, or possibility of losing your job. And I say that because if you do not file that claim and you end up needing significant care or treatment, um, you start you got to start to figure out, well, who's going to pay for that? And is it going to be my health insurance carrier? Well, maybe, um, but it maybe not if if it's outlined that, you know, the incident happened at work or that you had pain from work. Um, and and additionally, from a from a wage standpoint, if you can't actually do the job, 
um, you know, and you're missing time from work and so on, not filing that claim, it, it, it fails to protect you in terms of getting your weight, your lost wages paid. Um, and if there's ever uh, a permanent issue, making sure that the, the permanency claims are paid. So again, well, well, the direct answer to the question of, am I going to lose my job or is it possible that I'm going to lose my job is, yes, it's absolutely possible. Um, the, to not file the claim could actually be quite a bit worse. Um, and so uh, that's what I mainly wanted to, to address today. And I answered, probably answered this question, I don't know how many times this week. And you know, I'm very direct and practical, and I, in representing only injured workers, uh, I completely understand the financial strain and the stress that comes behind possibly losing the job and not being able to pay for, you know, bills and rent or mortgage payments or so on. Um, but I've seen it much worse on the other end when somebody fails to report that claim and it ends up being a severe injury. There's not a whole lot anybody can do about that. Um so it's a great question. It's something that comes up all the time. Um, and there's absolutely a threat or risk of losing the employment if, if you file a workers' compensation claim, but not doing so could have more significant consequences. Um, the other thing that I'll just touch on briefly is part of the reason we see so many terminations or um, you know suspensions and things of that nature is not necessarily because the individual filed the claim. It's that after the claim is filed, the follow-up and the paperwork um, is, is not as strong uh, as it should be. Um, so the, the, the other thing I wanted to just touch on is when we see these terminations, a lot of them are not so direct. Oh, you filed a claim, you're fired. Um, it's you filed a claim and now you kind of have this um, call it, you know, tag on you, so to speak, or, or, a, or, a, you know, the, uh, you know, where the employer is looking at you going, okay, we're going to see how and, and what and how you're going to react to things. And what we, and what we see is that there's this heightened sensitivity to the whole situation. And so what we suggest is, you know, making sure that if you do file a claim and you do proceed with medical treatment, that Number one, you get an updated return to work slip at each visit with your doctor that specifically outlines um, what you're capable of doing. If you need to be off of work completely, then we need that slip saying that you're off of work completely. If you're able to work within certain medical restrictions or physical work restrictions, you need a slip that's outlining that. Um, uh, that's going to add some protection for you uh, from the employer and that potential threat of termination. Um, where we see a lot of these terminations happening are when people have large gaps in treatment or they fail to get updated work slips outlining their restrictions, um, or the doctor releases them with no restrictions despite the fact that they're still having pain and issues and so on. So while there's a threat of termination simply because of filing the claim, what we see mo more often is not this direct action or reaction uh, to the filing of the claim, but rather we see these sorts of terminations occurring when not only the claim is filed, but there are errors as far as uh, paperwork and gaps in treatment and things that are uh, causing the employer or quite honestly permitting the employer to terminate uh, an employee without any sort of repercussion or consequence. So if you do file a claim, which we certainly suggest that you do after an injury happens and you follow up with your medical provider or your doctor for medical treatment, it is incredibly important that you, you follow up with the treatment itself, consistent appointments, you know, a couple of weeks apart from one another, if the pain and, and, and symptoms continue, and that you get that updated work slip that outlines what you can and can't do. Um, you need to get a copy of that work slip from your employer. Uh, excuse me. You need to get a copy of that work slip from your medical provider. You need to provide that to your employer. And we would highly, highly recommend that when you provide it to your employer, 
you provide it in writing. So either you scan it in um, and send it to the employer via email, uh, or uh, you take a picture or scan it in and send it to the employer via text. Um, ask the employers to confirm receipt. Ask them to say, yes, we received this. Yes, uh, we got it. You know, all you need is something real simple there. Uh, very, very important that that this happens because so many times we see these employers say things like, oh, we never got those slips or, oh, you know, you never sent it to us. And if it was just dropped off, you know, so you had the one copy and you dropped it off or you explained it verbally, there's really not a whole lot we can do about that. Um, so very, very important that you get those updated work slips outlining the restrictions and off work uh, if you need to be off work. And that those are provided uh, that those are provided to the employers uh, in writing. Uh, again, that's going to really, really reduce that threat of termination, um, even if you you know file the claim as you should do. So, uh, again, is it possible? Yes, uh, termination is certainly possible if you file a claim. But are there steps that you can take to try to prevent that from happening? Absolutely. Um, and, and getting those updated work slips and following up with your treatment, all of that's going to uh, reduce the chance of that occurring. So uh, really appreciate you listening. If there's ever any questions about this or you want to talk about your particular situation or your particular employer, we obviously know a lot of employers here in Wisconsin. We deal with them all the time and we can give you some insight as to your particular situation. So thank you again.